Hey, I just wanted to go over uh, 1 Colossians 13 through 14. came up as a verse of the day for me. And it uh, is a verse that really speaks to the grace of God and the length that he was willing to go to redeem us as a race and to save us from our, our bondage and sin. And it says here, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins. And so we know that Jesus came to the earth and bled and died as a man on the cross. And he took upon himself the weight of every sin of every person who would ever live, that only if they would believe in him would they be redeemed. And it doesn't say if only they would get baptized, if only they would tithe, if only they would go to church every Sunday, if only they would give to the poor and help the needy. Those are things that Jesus encourages, uh, you know, encourages us to do as a church and especially as a believer in, in Christ and, and to be Christ-like. But it doesn't say anything about we have to do those things to get to heaven. There was a price to be paid and it was blood. There is no other thing than the blood and, and we are not worthy of paying the price that Jesus paid himself. And so for us to think that there's a work that we can do in our lifetime that will add to the sacrifice that Jesus already paid for us, that's just, that's not possible, okay? So if you have somebody telling you, oh, you have to be baptized, you have to go to church every Sunday, you have to do this, you have to do that, you're going to hell. That's just not the case. We see time and time again where Jesus said that, if you believe in me, right, that thief on the cross next to him never got baptized. That thief on the cross never tithed. He never went to church. He never did anything other than hang on a cross next to Jesus and say, please remember me in your kingdom. And Jesus told him, you will be with me in paradise. And so don't let other people tell you any differently that Jesus is not going to accept you into his open arms. If you believe in him, that is how it works. It's not about what we do. It's about who we believe did the ultimate for us because we're not worthy of that, right? It's just not possible for us as sinful humans to pay that price. There was never any sin or death involved in God's creation. When God created Adam and Eve, when he created the garden, they were perfect. It was perfect. There was no death. They were immortal. But whenever the, the serpent tempted Eve, and Eve ate from the tree, and then she got Adam to eat from the tree, we as a race were doomed, essentially, to a life of sin and death. And we were born into it. There was nothing we can do. If you were perfect throughout your entire life, though it's impossible, but still you would be born into sin and there's nothing you can do to, re to redeem yourself. But the greatest thing of all is that now that we have Jesus and he's come to the earth and sacrificed himself for us, we don't have to do all that stuff. If you look at the Old Testament, they had to go in. They had to sacrifice animals. They had to have this, this altar. And the priest had to go through very strict protocols and follow these procedures in order to give a sacrifice that was worthy of atoning for the sins of the people. And, and now we just have Jesus who did all that. And he gives us direct access to God. You, you look at the people of the Old Testament, like Moses and Noah and Abraham, all of these great figures of the, of, of the Old Testament, essentially, we have it so much better than they ever did because they never had the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit as believers. And so we can have discernment and we can go to God directly for discernment. We can speak to God and, and say, God, please give me, give me discernment. And that's something that God will always answer your prayer. If you're asking for God to give you discernment and wisdom, he will always answer that prayer. And just know that the enemy is, is always going to try and trick us and, and plant seeds and, and, and try and get us astray. But you have to remember, it will always be good if it's from the Lord. If, it, if it's from the Lord, it will be aligned with his word and it will be good. 
If it's not good, if it's not aligned with God's word, you can probably bet that it is, you know, the enemy or it's it's your own plans. And you need to make sure that you are taking your plans to God and using God's plan for your life to be the center focus of your direction. Because whenever we stray from the path that God has for us, we try and do things the way that we want to do it or how we think we should do it, then we obviously a lot of times we'll find that God will rectify our mistake and he will call us back to him sometimes in a manner that we really don't enjoy. Um, I'm sure many of you have been there. The further you try to push things in your own direction based on your plans, the more God will humble you and bring you to your knees until you realize you're not on the path that God, you know, that God has for you and he'll come calling you back okay so um i just wanted to kind of touch base on that and you know it, people just really don't understand the length that god went to to save us from ourselves you know he had to come down from heaven and sacrifice himself and, and take the burden of every sin that we ever commit in the past and today and then in the future in heaven there is no such thing as time that's something God created for us. And outside of this universe that we know, there is no such thing. And so for people to put God in a box and, and try and take away from his, his splendor and his, his magnificence, um, it, it really does a disservice to God because God is omnipresent, meaning he is with everybody everywhere all the time. He is omnipotent, you know, meaning all powerful. And for God, he is I am, right? Like, there, like there's no other way to sum it up other than just to say he is I am. He's everything. He created all of this. And we are just stewards here on this planet until he calls us back to his kingdom. And so whenever people think about, you know, going to church and living a, a life you know, as free of sin as you can do it, that's great and all. But at the end of the day, whenever it comes time for us to face our judgment, you know, um, like I said, works are not really required. I mean, sure, you, you are building up a mansion in heaven by donating um, your money to the poor and to go into um, kitchens and help and volunteer and, and, you know, whatever the case may be. Finding a place where you can help give back to the poor and the needy. That is one of the greatest calls in the Bible. One of the, the, the chief uh, principles that, that Jesus himself um, instilled in the early church was to give to the poor and to the needy. And to love one another um, as you do yourself, essentially. To, to treat your, your enemies even with grace and to feed them if they're hungry. It doesn't preach anywhere in the Bible, especially the New Testament and Jesus's message that we are to be isolated and to sit up on our high hills and say, oh, I'm better than you and you should do this and you should do that. And if you don't do this, then, you know, we don't get along. You're not going to heaven. You're going to go to hell. That's not Jesus's message. And when we use a message of hatred, you'll find that people often shut down and you're not going to be spreading any good news to anybody. Jesus' message was of love, and only with love are you going to repel evil. That's just how it works. Evil will never repel evil. It'll just add to it. And so I encourage you to definitely dig into your Bibles today. Um, spend time just asking God for discernment and a path that His will be done in your life and that you are not just trying to forge things on your own and that he would guide you each and every day that's what i pray for um and it really encourages me to know that god said if we ask we will receive and especially if we are coming to him each and every day and his word seeking guide uh, guidance there um and, and in prayer asking for discernment and asking for wisdom and asking for him to send him uh, or to, to you know send himself as as his holy spirit to us essentially to strengthen us and to to keep us you know from temptation and to keep evil away um, because the world we live in is full of it and you need to remember that 
whenever you're on social media especially there can be a lot of evil creep in there so you need to be mindful of how the enemy might try to sneak into your life i encourage people to um you know stop listening to anything that's not positive as far as your music choices for instance music is a very big uh, emotional you know entity in itself it can cause great emotions um, out of people and they can be good they can be bad so depending on what type of music that you're listening to if you're listening to a music that is a you know, positive encouraging type of music and you don't listen to anything else then you don't really have to worry about negativity creeping into your life and the enemy trying to get in there and separate you from God essentially so that's why I I listen to pretty much exclusively um, Christian music. You know, K Love is a uh, a radio station that you can go download their app on the the, the stores on all the app stores for free. You can listen for free. Um, there's no commercials because it's listener funded. Essentially, they do a pledge drive a couple times a year. But other than that, you don't really hear commercials. You'll just hear good Christian music throughout the day, and you'll also hear people call in and give their testimonies on how. Um, the music has changed their lives and, and how it's encouraged them. Um, some people have called in and said that it saved their lives whenever they were at the, the you know, the, 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 the deepest moment of their life when they were probably going to kill themselves. And out of the, the static on their radio as they're driving through the middle of nowhere, here comes God through a radio station. And so it, it, it's, it's encouraging to know that you can always have worship with God and it's free and I, I love that about Caleb and it's, it's a light in the dark for me and so there's also the Bible app that you can use it's um, the version Bible app you like Y-O-U version and it's free on the, the, the Play Store and the Apple Store you can get that and then I encourage people to download the plan from Nikki Gumbel he does the Bible in one year. You can just search for plans um, down there at the bottom of your app. Once you get it installed, click on plans and then go up to the top where it says search and you can click uh, Bible in one year or you can type in Nikki Gumbel, N-I-C-K-Y-G-U-M-B-E-L, I believe. Um, but that is a really terrific way for you to get in each and every day and get just kind of the, uh, the Old Testament, you know, Proverbs, Psalms, stuff like that, and then New Testament and how all of that really lines up um, to each other. Because when you read the Bible, if you just pick a verse and you try and take that verse out of context without reading the whole chapter or understanding what that entire book might be about in itself, you can really get lost really quick and you can, you know, formulate some, some bad ideas and some wrong um, theology there so make sure that um, if you can download the uh, the Bible app with Nikki Gumbel uh, or the, the the free Bible app and then get the the plan the Bible in one year with Nikki Gumbel and um, Nikki is really great to listen to he's got a really great soft voice and he's really encouraging to me um, you know each and every day I love listening to him so I highly encourage you to do that as well um, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't already, please do like this video and uh, follow me here for more content. I would love to, um, you know, do any content on anything that you guys are interested in talking about. So, all right, I will let you get back to your days.